West Cumbria specifically, which is the area where I'm from, and committed atrocities only half an hour from where I was, and I remember vividly, I remember when all of these sort of events were going on. So, a little bit of warning before we start, it's not a fun or pleasant tale, but it is a true crime, and I do think it is worth talking about. So, of course, we have my notes. described as a quiet, popular man 
who worked uh, as a self-employed taxi driver in Whitehaven. Uh, I'll probably put up images every so often. I'm going to turn it down again. It's just quite bright. It's just quite bright, isn't it? Yeah, okay, we'll go with that. It's a little darker. Um, yeah. Uh, in 2007, okay, I'm trying to understand a bit of the psyche of uh, the guy. In 2007, Bird was beaten unconscious by four men who refused to pay the taxi fare, and friends said that he changed after the attack. Reports suggest he sought help for his mental state and Bird continued to hold and renew his firearms a shotgun certificate from 1974. So um, firearm ownership is uh, really rare in uh, the UK. Uh, very few people in terms of like you know, the percentage of the population are firearms. It's, it's minuscule. A lot of the time it's farmers. I have uh, friends who uh, have firearms, but yeah, they're farmers. But there's a really, really strict uh, process and licensing. Um, you, you can't just have one. There's a, a lot of um, um, hoops you have to jump through to be able to own a firearm and to be um, registered as a firearm owner. Um, and I think that's what's really important about this, um, telling this true crime, especially for um, perhaps a, yeah, a more American audience, uh, which because the majority of viewers here on the ASMR game are American, where well, obviously gun ownership is a lot more prevalent as the uh, the story goes on, um, it's important to bear in mind that, you know, gun ownership isn't commonplace <laughs> here in the UK. So yeah, so even though he was um, perhaps a bit mentally unhinged, he was still able to um, own and buy weaponry, firearms. attacks is what's been broken down to his targeted shootings. These were these were targeted by Derek. Early early in the hours of the second of June, Bird left his home in his Citroen Zara Picasso, uh, which again I'll put up a picture of a Citroen Picasso. Um, quite funny cars. Um, he drove to his twin brother's house, David so he drove to his twin brother David's house. Bird then shot David 11 times in the head and body with a 22 caliber rifle, killing David. He then traveled to the family solicitors, a man called Kevin Commons. Commons attempted to drive away from Bird, but Bird did this by firing a double barreled shotgun with one of the shells hitting Commons in the shoulder. Commons then tried to flee from his vehicle, scrambling out of his car um, at the entrance of his farmyard. Bird then proceeded to shoot Commons twice in the head, killing him. This is when Bird began to sort of travel out of his sort of immediate vicinity. Bird began to travel to Whitehaven. So I suppose a bit of help on the sort of geography. It's all, you know, Cumbria is quite a rural uh, county. Um, you know, lots of farms, lots of fields, um, lots of roads, but like country roads. So Bird began, and so the populations are relatively concentrated in the towns. So Bird began to travel to Whitehaven, which is one of the bigger towns in West Cumbria. A witness called the police to report um, the shooting of Commons, but was 
delayed several minutes by asking neighbours what to do. She also, despite hearing gunshots, described Bird as carrying a, an air rifle. And this delay is incredibly important when you think how time sensitive and how quickly these events these events events unfolded. Um, yeah. Bird then went to a friend's house. He had a friend to whom he had loaned a shotgun, and so he went there to pick it up. However, he was answered the door was answered by his friend's wife. And so Bird just turned around and left. Uh, so he didn't attack his friend or or the friend's wife. And the, the wife didn't have access to the shotgun, so he was unable to retrieve this extra weapon. At around mid-morning, he drove to a taxi rank and called over another cab driver, a man named Darren Rucastle, who, who um, Derek knew. Derek knew uh, Darren. There was previous conflict between uh, the two over Rucastle's behaviour, so Rucastle had bullied Derek and been um, uh, aggressive to him in the past. Um, in his behaviour, he would poach fares, he would poach taxi fares, and uh, apparently even openly admit admitting to damaging Derek's tyres. So, obviously in a professional capacity, uh, Rue Castle um, was unpleasant to Derek. And uh, so, you can see here there being motivation. Um, Derek uh, would call called Rue Castle over to his cab. When he approached, um, Bird shot him twice at point blank range in the lower face chest and abdomen. Um, and Rue Castle uh, died and he was the only person to die in White Haven. Because um, uh, I've got friends who, uh, who live in White Haven and uh, I remember sort of everyone being told to uh, sort of lock down. This is later on. But you know, just uh, I can't quite stress how from actually physically being there, it was really close to home as it were. So, after Rue Castle, Bird drove alongside another taxi driver, a man called Donald Reed, who he shot in the back. Bird then looped back round in his taxi and fired twice at Reed, uh, who was um, who was calling emergency personnel. He was calling the police. Uh, bird missed. Next, he stopped alongside another taxi. So again, there's a bit of a theme emerging. Another taxi driver, um, a bloke called Paul Wilson. Paul Wilson, um, who he shot, uh, shot in the face and uh, severely wounded. At this point, at this point, unarmed officers were aware and then began and began following Bird's taxi. Bird continued. Bird continued firing at another taxi passing by, injuring the driver and the passenger, a man and a woman. Bird was able to flee when he pointed the gun at the officers who sought cover. So he was able to flee. The police was tailing him, but the police being unarmed. Um, Bird just aimed his weapon at them to sort of spook them and rather than spending time you can hear sirens now rather than assaulting them he used the opportunity while they were um, sort of seeking shelter cover to flee um, and then yet yeah, the area was then urged to sort of lock down and to stay indoors um, Bird proceeded to drive through several local towns calling um, um, I can't even read my own writing oh yeah so he would call over calling over victims randomly and shooting so his sort of um, strategy would be to use the the guys of the sort of big taxi call people over and to then assault and kill uh, in Egremont Again, this is like a village town, sort of near uh, Jacqueline Wilson.
Wilson was walking her dog when she was shot at but unharmed. Susan Hughes was carrying her shopping when shot in the chest and abdomen. Bird got out of his taxi and then engaged in a struggle with Susan. However, unfortunately, Susan was then uh, killed. She lost that uh, fight. So just to really sort of convey the sort of horror, it was um, it was uh, random for some reason. Yeah, sorry, we've moved on to yeah, sorry, we've moved on to sort of the random shootings. Um, yeah, so after Rue Castle, um, it moved on to this is now random. So it almost as if his vendettas um, are gone. He's now just going mad. to continue to evade. 
evade the police due to basically roadworks and the nature of the roads. Uh, so again, roadworks are, are a pain in the arse anyway um, and slow you down. And especially on country roads, you get a roadwork and it twists and turns and you've got junctions. It's quite easy to lose. So the police lost him. Um, bird shot two women by pretending to ask for directions in Eskadale Valley. Eskadale's beautiful. Eskadale is absolutely beautiful. And um, it is one of those where, you know, it's a very touristy area. And, um, yeah, the Lake District in general is. And, and you know, people stopping, um, people stopping to ask for um, directions is... Um, People stopping to ask for directions is not unheard of. Um, however, at this point, his um, route was becoming um, much clearer to the police. Um, the route he was taking. Um, he then arrived at the village of Boot. He stopped at the premises on Sims Travels, where he fired ran at random targets and injured a man passing by. Shortly after firing at two cyclists, Bird crashed his taxi into several vehicles and a stone wall, abandoning his car near a local beauty spot. A family of four, obviously unaware of the horrors and events that have unfolded um, that morning, are offered, offered to help, try to help Derek. However, he refused their assistance and actually told them to leave. He told them to leave. He then removed his rifle from the taxi, walked over a bridge into Oak Owl Woods, where he was uh, where he was found dead by um, police shortly after. So, um, so he he'd killed himself. It's just a absolutely horrendous, horrendous tale, and the motivations for it are quite unclear. There are some beliefs that it was motivated by grudges, um, so the taxi driver had wronged him. Uh, there was also um, a comment that he could have been aggrieved um, by, he was employed by Sellafield, and Sellafield is a big nuclear power plant. In, in Cumbria, in West Cumbria, um, and in 1990, I believe, he was accused of theft and he was dismissed and uh, I think almost faced a uh, prison charge. And I think this motivation is rumoured by the fact that three of the victims had worked at Sellafield, but none of them were involved in his resignation, so I don't think that really holds um, much... Uh, much um, uh, crappy task. Then another theory suggests he was jilted. Um, apparently a friend had said that Derek had met a Thai girl um, when on holiday in Thailand struck up a bit of a relationship with her that continued when he came back home and apparently he had sent her a thousand pounds, sent her a grand and after that, she then cut off communications and dumped him, essentially. And he was apparently said to, um, he had been made a fool out of him. So that's a possible motivation. Then there's the family disputes. Um, there's suggestions that was dispute over the father's will. This is motivated by, this is um, hinted at by the fact that Two of the first victims were his brother and his family solicitor, which is quite specific, a solicitor, his brother and his family solicitor. But then on that same sort of track, there was also fear um, that he was going to be found out for tax fraud and he thought he was going to be uh, prosecuted and imprisoned for tax fraud because apparently he had a secret bank account that had about 60 grand in it and he thought his brother and solicitor again brother and solicitor were conspiring against him and three days before the murder of 
Harris offence began, he had rung his brother 44 times. So obviously, um, a lot of tension between uh, the family. Um, but yeah, that's the the true the true crime of Derek Bird and yeah, the Cumbrian shootings. Yeah, mad that. Like I say, because uh, like I say, I feel like the third of all time happened so close by. It's a very real, real one, and I think you know the effects are still. I think you know if you go, especially if you go to Wyvern and stuff, you know the families, because it's a small. They're all small towns, and so um, I'm not from there, like specifically, but it'll be you know especially like the villages I'm from. Everybody knows everybody. Haunting. But that was another true crime UK story. Um, I know true crime are really popular. Um, uh, so I sort of, this is sort of bringing a sort of um, what do you call it? A bit of a um, UK perspective. Uh, so stuff you may not have heard about. Especially the Cumbrian shootings, I definitely uh, may not have heard about. But if you like this video, guys, then I am more than happy to do some more of these. Um, like, um, unfortunately, I think there are still quite a few to do, big ones to do. But yeah, let me know down in the comments what you would like me to do. And like I say, I hope this is working. <laughs> That's all for this evening's video. We've got another Quiet Ones podcast coming out. Basically, me and my flatmate doing a bit of a ramble for an hour. A few drinks. Really good fun. Got one of them coming out. And lots of good videos coming out. Like I say, streaming's back. Please, if you can, check out the Movember um, description. Uh, in the top of the description box. And if you've got yeah, a spare pound or something to just donate to the cause. And so we can get rid of this caterpillar. At the end of the month, that'll be that'll be really good and really appreciate. It. But if you can't, you know what? It's just great to have you guys here with me this evening. So if you haven't already, hit that like button, hit subscribe, and I'll see you all very soon. So.